What is up everyone, it is your boy Speed here, and today I'm going to be giving the best off leaners in 7.27 for every single rank. I'm gonna be giving two heroes for each rank. Uh, the first is going to be somewhat of a meme for each rank. Not a meme, right? Like, I haven't gone overboard. I'm not gonna tell you to pick like, oh, I don't know, what's a really bad offlaner? Uh, I'm not gonna tell you to pick Oracle offlane, right? I'm not that crazy, all right, guys? I'm pretty reasonable. I'm a pretty reasonable guy. You know, like when I tell you something's good, when I say something's broken, it's always broken. You know, you can trust me, which is why you should also trust me when I tell you to hit the like button because it's actually going to make your life 10 times better. In fact, I guarantee, it. hey, this is just a scientifically based study that if you click the like button of every single game lead video and you comment down below uh, that speed is your favorite human being in the world, uh, that you actually will win your next five ranked games. Is it a guarantee? Yes, it is. Uh, I'll send the study in the description. If it's not there, well, that's too bad. And let's get right into it. Also, there's another link next to uh, the description. If you click it, you're going to get sent somewhere on the internet. It's really cool. I post a lot of content over there. Recently, I made a video talking about Chris Luck Slark. It was a mid lane Slark where he absolutely popped off and I'll be doing more content like that in the future. And I also just made a video also talking about how to play the new Monkey King. If you're trying to play the new Monkey King and you feel like this hero is trashed and now that the Echo Saber doesn't work, and I don't know why, but it doesn't work, you should go check it out on the website. I talk about the new build that Royalia went. I think it's the optimal way to play the hero. I go in depth about how to just play this new Monkey King, right? What do you need to look for? How much do you farm? How much do you fight? And yeah, I'll hopefully see you guys there. All right, so hopping right into it. So let's talk about the Herald and Guardian bracket. So here, the first offlaner I'm going to be recommending is Wraith King. Yeah, I'm serious. It's Wraith King. Uh, well, you might say, Speed, are you kidding me? Wraith King, that's here as a safe laner. Why are you telling me to pick Wraith King? Well, uh, the funny thing is this hero, its win rate has gone up. It's gone up. So it was already 55%. Now it's 57. What do you want me to say? Right? <laughs> like, like. If I told you that I didn't think this hero is broken right now, in especially low MR games, I would be lying. I would be lying. This hero is way too good. And you might say, Speed, why why not just recommend it a safe laner then? Why not just wait for the safe lane video? Because I genuinely believe if you are Herald or Guardian, your best chance of winning, this is not me telling you to try to just cheese Dota, I genuinely believe your best chance of winning is to pick another carry and to learn if you're trying to gain MMR, to learn how to scale no matter what role you are. I would tell you to do this even if you're a four or a five. I would say, hey, you know, if you really want to gain MMR, maybe pick Shakira, learn to push in a, a couple ways here and there. Understand the fundamentals of gaining net worth and, and gathering gold, right? Because most players, they for some reason, they are so focused on fighting and it, they never build an advantage before fighting. And that's not how you get better. So, breaking off lane. Why is it good? Because people don't pressure you and you're just going to get farmed and then you just stay in your lane. Just stay in your lane. And when you have three or four skeletons, spawn them. That's all I'm going to really say. Do you have to dominate the lane? No, but most players don't dominate the lane. You could pick Legion and the, uh, most people just don't dominate the lane where you are. Uh, it's the reality, okay? It, you might not like hearing that if you're Herald of the Guardian, but it's the reality. You can watch your games. I'll even like make a video on in the future where I just point out every little difference between, you know, a Herald and a Mortal game and you'll see what I'm talking about. But that's why Wraith King is good offlaner. That's my meme one, but it, it's somewhat serious. Honestly, I think you'll have a higher chance of winning with Wraith King offlane than the next hero, which is Necro, who is still fantastic in this bracket. Why is that? Well, Necro is an offlaner. He kind of just naturally wins the lane, and he's one of those heroes that uh, really takes advantage of the fact that people don't buy regen. So when there's a lacking of regen in the laning stage, whether or not it's from the person playing Necro or from the person playing against the Necro, you're going to do really well, right? Because you naturally, with your Heartstop Aura, you deny regen, you chip them down, and you get your own regen. Also, your Q is more regen. Yes! You can't make the biggest mistake in Dota, which is not buying enough region. You can't do it. It's impossible. Unless you max out Ghost Shroud. Even then, actually, if you're playing Necro Offlane, guys, take a point in Shroud. Take a point in Shroud. You know the streamer? Take his point. And the reason why I say this is because if you buy a stick and you have 10 charges in the laning stage and you pop Shroud and then the stick, you just get like max health, max mana. And you pop a Fairy Fire and a Mango at the same time. You can even pop a Salve or a Tango. And like, you full heal. Also, if someone goes on you and you don't have Shroud, you are at least two to three times more likely to die. That's why you see pros actually take a point in it in the off lane. In the mid lane, you can get away with uh, no shroud because you're less likely to be ganked. It's harder to gank. You're closer to the tower. But in the off lane, you're far away from your tower. You need a point in shroud. You should buy a stick. And yeah, so the build I'm going to be recommending on Necro, honestly, this might seem a little bit far-fetched, but I genuinely believe Helmet of Dominator on Necro right now is really good. It's something I'm going to be experimenting, probably going to do a live game of this here on this YouTube. But Helmet of Dominator, the build is fantastic. Well, I do recommend you buy a stick slash wand first. I think that's very important. After that, you could pick up, you know, just regular brown boots, but then you can go straight into the, to 
the Helmet of Dominator buying a crown, buying the Helm of Iron Will gives you an insane amount of armor, which Necro actually lacks a little bit of. It gives you a ton of HP regen, and most importantly, the creep is really dang good. Right, the creep is really strong with Necro. It lets you farm really fast, it makes you extremely sustainable. You won't have mana problems as long as you have a stick and a couple clarities, uh, or you're just last hitting really well. And yeah, so those are the two heroes I recommend for the Herald and Guardian bracket. Now let's talk about Crusader and Archon, and the first hero, my slightly meme hero, is Bloodseeker. But the thing is that this hero was actually picked by, I believe, Secret, and definitely by OG. I know for a fact that um, mid one played it, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe he played it mid. Um, there was pro teams picking it, though, and what they would do is they would go their standard Bloodseeker items. They would often buy an Orma Venom for the laning stage, uh, Wand, Treads, you know, a uh, Wraith Band. Pretty standard stuff, right? But after that, what you would do is you go into an Atos, and what this did was it allowed you to be a frontliner. Because Atos gives you a lot of stats, right? It gives you a lot of strength. On top of that, it gives you the ability to root people inside of your silence. And if you guys know anything about Bloodseeker sounds, it goes from 3 at level 1 to 6 at level 4. A 6 second silence is a really long silence. And especially when people don't buy dispels, it wrecks them. And in the early game, Bloodrite is one of the highest damage nukes as well, because it's pure. So overall, uh, what you do with this Bloodseeker offlane is you, once again, just sustain your lane. Uh, it's really good to, once again, take advantage of the fact that people don't buy enough sustain in the lower ranks. Uh, this is not a guarantee. It depends from player to player, obviously. You pick Bloodseeker, you easily sustain the lane. Make sure you take a Valley Point in Bloodrite at either level 1, uh, level 2, or at level 4. And finally, after you go the Rod of Atos, I would like to mention what this hero should be buying is an Axe. Bloodseeker Axe is really great for teamfight, and it's not hard to use. That's the cool thing about Bloodseeker. If, if you're, you know, you're getting into Dota, or you're struggling to get MMR, maybe you're having a hard time casting your spells, or you're hard having a hard time getting big Echoes or uh, big Axe calls, it's not hard to get off a two-man rupture when you have two of them, because you just point and click, right? You point and click. And the thing is, it's low committal. You don't have to overextend to do it. You don't have to, like, get in melee range, which is what Axe Call and Echo Slam fundamentally make you do. Uh, so, you, so you don't die because of it. And I would argue it's just as important. It's just as big of a deal as getting a two-man Echo or two-man Call, right? Obviously, it depends on the heroes, right? Uh, getting a, a, a rupture onto a puck maybe isn't nearly as valuable as, as Echo Slamming a puck. But of course, that goes from matchup to matchup. But nonetheless, you pick up this Atos, you Atos into W. And you frontline for your team, make sure you tank a lot of damage. You even have an armor talent at level 10, a health talent at level 15. You don't have to take the health talent at level 15. You can take blood right damage if you want to try to scale a little bit. And uh, yeah, you go for the sacks, you root, you ulti, the two heroes that want to run around the most. Let's say it's like a troll warlord and maybe, a, oh, I don't know, a peel if you could find the re one. And yeah, it's really strong. Next up, let's talk about clockwork. Now, this hero just has a high win rate in general uh, within the Archon and Legend bracket. And I think that's because he's really good at solo killing people. And that's what I think too as well. So when you're playing Clockwork, what I recommend you do is you go for a very early boots, right? Go for a lot of early stats. So I recommend you buy Tranquils, a wand. You can go for a Bracer. The Bracers were nerfed a little bit, but I think they're pretty decent on Clockwork, right? And then you can go into a Blade Mail if it's a good Blade Mail game. You could straight rush Ags if it's a good Ags game. The Ags is fantastic on Clockwork. And you kind of just run around. You tank up a lot of damage. You solo kill the supports in the fights. And no one really farms that fast at this point. Uh, at least relative to a Divine and Immortal game, uh, people aren't flash farming as hard, so solo killing people is also not as hard. Also, the itemization is not nearly as specific, right? Uh, players have a harder time itemizing for specific matchups, and therefore you're going to have a much easier time actually solo killing people uh, within the Archon and Legend bracket, especially comparing it to Clockwork in a Immortal game, right? At least your average Immortal game. And I do recommend you pick Clockwork uh, when you know you have specifically good matchups. If they have uh, a bunch of heroes that you simply cannot kill, Right, like a Puck, a Rubik, who can just lift you out, like all these heroes, then maybe you want to avoid Clockwork. Or like a Jug, you know, or a Slark, things like this. I, I would not recommend picking Clockwork into heroes that you simply cannot kill. Next up, let's get into the Legend and Ancient bracket. So, for this bracket, my Mimi hero, or my more carry based hero, is Lone Druid. Uh, and yeah, Lone Druid's just good. It's good. It didn't get nerfed. Do I think Lone Druid's gonna get nerfed? I think it might get a slight nerf in the upcoming patch. Uh, where, you know, they're going to be nerfing heroes, I think. God, like, it keeps not happening. I'm expecting it to happen one of these days, and it's just not. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> but not, but it's going to probably happen within a week or two, if I had to guess. And, yeah, so Lone Druid. It's a really stable laner. This hero has no problem being an offlaner. In fact, it's been an offlaner for the longest period of time. Now, over time, it was transitioned to more of a mid laner uh, slash, slash safe laner. But it's fine as an offlaner. It's fine. As long as you make sure your team has stuns in other areas, right? Like, let's say you're... Position 4 is an Earthshaker, or, you know, your, your safe laner is a Sven or Wraith King, or your mid laner is an Ember, you're going to have plenty of control, right? I mean, on top of that, you have a, have a good route, 
you have Savage Roar, so it's not like Control's not there, uh, but it can be lackluster. And therefore, yeah, when you pick Lone Druid, you have two options. You can pick him with a Roamer, because Lone Druid is very, very good in, in self-sustaining, so a top-tier strategy is to pick him with, like, a Shaker. Shaker can just block the first two waves, secure you a good start, because Lone Druid can be killed at level 1, he can be run at, he's relatively squishy, his bear is actually only has 1300 HP, so the bear can die as well, uh, and therefore, you pick a Roamer who can just secure you level 1, level 2, right, they'll sap level 1, level 2, then they can go lead, they can go try lane, they can go gank mid, they can continue to protect you if they feel necessary, and that's something that I think is very strong, uh, especially if you happen to be, you know, dual queuing with with one of your friends, even if you're solo queuing, you just say, hey, can you secure me my, my early levels? And then you tell them to leave, right? And that that's that's what I like to call the OG in the secret strat. More top tier players are doing it. And next up is Night Stalker. Night Stalker has his highest win rate out of any uh, any bracket uh, within the Legend and Ancient bracket, averaging around 53.5%. And I think the reason for this is this is a bracket where players are are quite competent in last inning of denying, which is very important for Night Stalker. I know that's like that sounds extremely dumb. It's like, Speed, are you kidding me? Can't, doesn't that apply to every single hero? You know, don't you just have to last hit and deny if you're a core? Yeah, yeah. But if you get off to a bad start with Night Stalker and you can't last hit and deny early and you just overcommit to fighting in the early landing stage, it's going to hit minute five and you're going to have brown boots and like a stick and you're going to be useless. So it's very important that when you play Night Stalker, you understand what this hero's goal is. For the first five minutes, play really chill, uh, pull a lot of creep aggro, play defensive, keep your HP high, eat constant tango, ship out regen, ship out a stick, get your phase boots, maybe get a wand, uh, get parts to earn, you can even build into this new Helmet Dominator, and yeah, you just control the tempo of the game, which I think is really strong. Also, this is the bracket where I think communication starts to rise. It's not perfect, but you can definitely get people on the same page, right? Players uh, begin to understand matchups on a higher level, uh, who they need to gank, can they kill this person? Your intuition uh, is generally obviously higher, that's that's why you're higher MMR. So yeah, picking Night Stalker and picking it with some sort of ranged hero in lane, whether or not it's the new Orchid Winter Wyvern, which I think is fantastic, and really good with Night Stalker, right? Just the frontlining that Night Stalker provides for a hero like Position 4 Winter Wyvern is fantastic. You can pick it with a Puck, a Quap, a Rubik, a Pugna, a Shadow Demon, a Shaman, a Silencer, a Skyrath, it doesn't really matter. They're all pretty good with Night Stalker, Wind Ranger, doesn't matter. Uh, and yeah, I think you're going to have a good time. And finally, last but not least, is the Divine and Immortal Bracket. And now, I know if you're not from the Divine Immortal, you might not want to watch this, but uh, what I recommend you do is you understand why you could pick this in your own bracket as well, as long as you develop the skills that are required to make these heroes work. And for these heroes, it's going to be two micro-based heroes. The first is Io, which is kind of my meme -er one, uh, and the second is Chen. Now, why is Io good? Well, Io right now buys Helm of the Dominator. It's really good. I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, where I think Io is going to be one of the strongest cores. In fact, I think I said he was going to be a mid laner, which I still agree with. I think Io is a mid laner. Fantastic. However, I think Io was an off laner or a safe laner is good too, right? Just there's not much of a difference between off lane and safe lane Io. It's just, just you know, like where you're laning, uh, at least for pubs. In pro matches, you could have a quote unquote safe lane Io playing in the off lane just for matchup purposes or, or you know, laning purposes, tri lane purposes. And therefore, you know, Io is just good. We saw this at TI with OG. They were picking with Ana every single game. And it works. It works. And it's been buffed. This new Helm of the Dominator is so good for Io. The bonus damage, the movement speed, the fact that you get the tethered movement speed uh, is so good. And you just play as this core. Now, what do I recommend you pick it with if you're going to pick it in the offlane? You could pick it with the OG Classic, which is Abaddon Io. On Abaddon, you max your Q, you max your W, you just sustain the Io. It's insane. You Q the Io, it heals the Io, and it heals yourself back up. It's basically infinite sustain. Anytime the Io gets gone on, you shield them, right? Because what is Io's weakness early on? Uh, he can get gone on, right? He can get run at. But that's not a problem with Abaddon. You just heal, 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 protect, heal, protect, heal, frontline. It's so easy. And what you also can do with Abaddon is you realize, if you realize that the IO gets off to a good start, you can simply go run around and contest pulls, make stacks, leave the IO alone, let him get a lot of solo XP because IO does need a lot of XP. And so, yeah, that lane is really strong. You could pick it with something like a Tiny who can just frontline for you with a Tusk, with a Treant. Uh, that's a cool one. I think Treant can make a lot of sense. Maybe you take your E and your W on Treant uh, pretty early on into the lane. You heal up the IO, heal up yourself. It's, it's really strong. And therefore, I think Io in these dual lane settings, uh, being played not as the support, but rather as the core, who gets into an early Helmet Dominator after into an MKB, is going to be very powerful for this patch. So keep that in mind, guys. And then lastly, we have Chen. And I know, I feel like I keep saying this. I just love this Helmet Dominator item. It's like one of those things where I hope it ends up proving itself to be really good. I think a lot of players are uh, believing that this item is very strong. I'm not sold, though. right? I'm not sold. I'm not 100% sold. I'm like 80, 90% sold, right? Like, I'm about to make the purchase. It's in my cart, right? We're almost there. 
The reason why I think it's good on Chen is pretty self-explanatory. Chen likes creeps. Chen can buff if his creeps. So what you do on Chen in this current patch, in my opinion, is you rush a Helmet and Dominator, you have a Blightstone, hopefully with your starting items, um, and then what you do after that is you buy a Vlad's, and you just keep buying Auras. So when you have this Helmet Dominator and Vlad's, the Vlad's gives you 15% life steal, 18% extra damage on all your heroes. Uh, and then after that, you can continue to buy more Auras. You can buy an AC, you can buy a Pipe, and you just become this insane Aura buyer for your team. Now, Auras were nerfed, right? There's no denying that. You can't really buy drums on Chen. Uh, you, you can't even buy, um, you know, Pipe is much more expensive. And therefore, it's fine, though. It's fine, because what you do is you can just adjust to whatever your team needs. If it's a really good Pipe game, go Pipe. Maybe your team just wants to do more physical damage. You can buy a Crest. The Crest can shut down the enemy team's damage. It can let you Roche 12 minutes into the game. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You could go Helm Dom into Medallion, into Vlad's, and then you just Roche, right? You give your team the ability to kill objectives so fast. Also, if you don't believe me that Chen is a good offlaner, just watch 33 solo kill people. And in my opinion, that's still really easy. This new Chen creep hits so hard as well. And, you know, the old Dominator was great for Chen. I would even argue that maybe it was just better. Uh, because he gave 20% damage to all your other units, that's fantastic. But the thing is, you can at least get the Alpha Wolf with one of your multiple creeps, uh, and having the 30% damage is going to make you shred heroes. Combine that with a Medallion, and yeah, it's GG. It's just absolutely GG. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of Chen. Also, Mech is good right now. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Me Mech was actually buffed for Chen. You could go Helm Dom into Mech. Why is that? Because you could casually start the lane with a Headdress and a Buckler on Chen, and then you don't have to upgrade to the Mech right away. Right, because the recipe for the mech is really expensive. It's 1175 gold, right? 1175. And that's why you could just go headdress to start the lane. Then you could go into more regen with a stick into the helm dom. You get this massive army of creeps. You destroy towers, destroy Roche. You provide infinite heal. And I think it's really good. But thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, maybe you want to see the next video uh, as supports. I haven't done supports yet. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Comment what you guys want. Thanks for watching as per usual. The, the new patch is hype. I can't wait for the next one. And I'll see you guys in it. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me. But I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there. And generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.